What's up everyone, I'm Taylor, and I decided to take the show out of the studio this week because it is finally fall, y'all. It might not feel like it out here quite yet, but let me tell you, I cannot wait for sweaters and the smell of pumpkin. So let's get right to it. It's time for the Weekly Rundown. Since we're taking the show on the Old Town Road, it's only fitting that I have a story about my man, Lil Nas X. Well, the Atlanta Cowboy is writing a children's book. Lil Nas X, whose real name is Montero Lamar Hill, says he is releasing a picture book called C is for Country. The publisher, Random House Children's Book, says the book will feature Lil Nas X and Panini the Pony on a journey through the alphabet. I know what all of my friends are getting at their baby showers. All right, now it turns out the grass isn't always greener. Well, actually it is on Gucci's new line of denim. Yeah, let me tell you about that. Take a close look. These overalls have been purposely stained with grass. It's just 1400 bucks for that play in the dirt again warning look for folks who, let's be honest here, probably don't do yard work. The Italian fashion house debuted the look for its grunge inspired fall winter 2020 collection. Who knew grunge is fashion? Are uh, overalls not your thing or maybe that price tag is too steep? Well, don't worry, there's jeans too. And those are only, um. 1200 bucks. Yeah, 1200 bucks, or you could just roll around on the floor yourself, right? Okay, now since we're outside, what do you usually do when you're outside? You get in your car and you go to a drive through right? I mean, come on. Well, Mandy Gaither has six new items coming to fast food restaurants, and let me tell you, I think I want them all. If you're already mourning the loss of the Mexican pizza, you're not alone. But fast food restaurants take it and give it. Taco Bell is set to debut the chicken chipotle melt in November. But you don't have to wait that long for other chains. Just in time for Oktoberfest, Auntie Anne's teamed up with Samuel Adams for a new do-it-yourself pretzel kit, available exclusively on a special website the company set up. Speaking of pretzels, Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger is now available. You can also get it with fried chicken instead. And if you like to eat more chicken, you won't find a new foul food at Chick-fil-A, but you will find a chocolate fudge brownie, a mocha cream cold brew, and a new blend of coffee. And how about spicy chicken nuggets at McDonald's or a customized version of the quarter pounder named after rapper Travis Scott? If you crave Cinnabon early, you may like its first ever frozen breakfast line being sold at some major grocers. The selection has six new sweet and salty items, including a Cinnabiscuit chicken sandwich. I think I'm all for that Wendy's pretzel bacon pub cheeseburger. Oh my gosh. Okay, now this is a story that will make any pet lover cringe. A new survey shows 40% of pet owners would give up their dog for a month rather than ditch their phone. Oh my gosh, how mean. Doug, if you're watching this, I wouldn't do that to you. The point of the survey was to see what sacrifices Americans were willing to make in order to keep using their devices. But wait, get this one, dogs actually uh, were more successful than relationships. 44% of the people surveyed said they'd go without seeing their partners for a month if they could keep their cell phones. A couple of best friends in Arizona are getting a lot of attention online. Now the two are very different, but that doesn't bother them at all. Meet Duke the calf, that's the handsome fella in the hat, and his BFF, Rex the chicken. Since they met, they've been inseparable. They live at Amy's Farm Animal Sanctuary southeast of Phoenix. It's a place for animals with special needs. Duke was born without bones in his legs and also has dwarfism. Rex was brought here by a neighbor who was worried the other chickens were going to hurt him. The video of the unlikely friends has gone viral and you can see why. If you're like me, then you hate snakes, like hate. Well, you know exactly where I'm going with this, a story about snakes. A slithery little thing found its way to reproduction at a St. Louis Zoo. The zoo's ball python is the oldest snake on record that's known to be living in a zoo. But this 50-year-old python shocked zookeepers by laying eggs because get this, she hasn't been near a male snake in 15 years. Interesting. Well, not really. Apparently ball pythons have been known to delay fertilization or reproduce entirely by themselves without a mate. 
Zookeepers are on the case. They plan to do genetic testing to find out how this mom-to-be came to be. Speaking of unexpected surprises from the very well-seasoned, watch an Illinois man celebrate his 100th birthday by breaking a wet and wild record. Bill Lambert became the world's oldest scuba diver by taking the plunge in Pearl Lake, and the feat is actually an old hat for old Bill. He's broken the record three years in a row. He says his goal is to stay in shape and break it again at 101. It smells like death. What? We're gonna puke and die. Okay, believe it or not, that person is talking about a flower. A very large flower is causing quite a stink in Roseville, and it's also gaining a lot of attention. The seven-foot corpse flower smells like... The odor of garbage and rotting flesh. Mmm, yummy. The flower gets its name because it gives off different sulfur compounds. Science teacher CJ Addington is the flower's caretaker at Roseville High School, the only high school in the world, he says, that has been able to bloom a corpse flower. The teacher says the foul flower is right at home in a year that, well, frankly stinks. You know what other flowers really uh, smell? Roses. I hope you know where I'm going with this. Roses really smell like boo. <laughs> okay, speaking of that, listen to this. Poop so bad. <laughs> so an Oklahoma woman was getting pulled over for not wearing her seatbelt, but when the officer ran her information, turned out she had a warrant for her arrest. To try to get out of the situation, she claimed it was her birthday, said she just lost her license, and she had to go to the bathroom. And Poop so bad. Where do you think I was birthday, going? Man. Huh? Calm down. If they don't, if they don't end up extraditing you for the warrants, I'm just gonna cite and release you. You just need to call you a ride. <laughs> Nobody's gonna come get me right now. To poop. We need you to let me go. After that didn't work, she peeled out and led officers on a high-speed pursuit and eventually was arrested. Clearly not the smartest little lady. But on the other hand, this next man I'm introducing you to is a genius and he's clearly very deserving. Nick Luke is from Irvine and was laid off after 15 years at his job due to the pandemic. So he turned to food delivery to make ends meet for his family. But he's making the most of what's been thrown to him. With each delivery, he includes a personal message, one he hopes will land him a full-time job. I've printed up my, my resume to this point and I've included a, a small little letter. It basically just reads, um, you know, my name, I'm an IT professional. I was impacted by the pandemic and really looking for employment opportunities. Well, after one delivery, 20-year-old Taylor Lewis thought that he was just as smart as I think he is, so she decided to post his resume and story on social media, and it got plenty of bites. There's been a lot of people giving uh, advice on where to look for the IT kind of job that he was looking for. Lewis says he hopes a future employer will appreciate his thinking outside of the box, and he's grateful for Lewis, who thought to help. The five minutes she took to do something on my behalf has yielded a lot more than I could say in, this, in as many months. And I'm just glad that I could help them just get the word out there. People helping people, I love that. Now a Kentucky driver with a hand-drawn license plate failed to fool police, but the effort sure was comical. Millsburg police officers conducted a traffic stop after spotting this license plate. From a distance, the homemade license plate looked like the real deal. Its numbers and letters are well drawn and resemble the state plate. After further investigation, police determined it was a DIY plate. Also, the driver had no insurance and was driving with a suspended license. The police department offered some advice on their Facebook page for any drivers who might be looking to test their license plate making skills. Don't forget to draw their registration sticker. Now I'm hitting the road too, but I swear my license plate is real. I'm taking you to the Desert Aids Project Health Center to tell you about an exciting event that's coming up. I'll see you after the break. You ready to start the day, Thalia? You bet. We got a lot to cover. And I have something I want to tell you about in your health today. Hey, it looks as though we have some changes in the weather coming up real soon. Grab your popcorn, we're talking movies. Waking up with NBC Palm Springs today, 5 to 7 a.m. Stand by. Welcome back 
to the Weekly Rundown. I'm at the Desert AIDS Project Health Center where I'm about to go talk to Stephen Hankey about some really cool things happening here and an upcoming event. Let's go. So this is actually my first time on this campus and I know DAP is working to expand healthcare access. Talk to us about what's happening here to do that. Yeah, so we're in the Blue Clinic. We've, uh, right before the pandemic, DAP opened a Blue Clinic and a Green Clinic in this new space next to our original building. And even before the COVID pandemic shined a spotlight on the health inequalities in our valley, DAP knew that, right? We knew that because when we began 36 years ago, we began because of healthcare inequalities. We began because there was a group of people that weren't being served properly. And so we knew when this pandemic started that uh, part of the problem was going to be uh, the inequalities in healthcare. Who has access to primary care? Who has access to testing? Very uh, soon after it began, our CEO decided to convert one of our clinics into a COVID-19 triage clinic. And to date, we've tested and treated over 4,000 of our friends and neighbors in that space. These clinics are home to 7,000 individuals who call DAP their healthcare home. And they get primary care, behavioral health care, dental care, HIV specialty care, all of the wraparound services, the social services that are required for them to really thrive and live their best lives, they start in these clinics, in these meetings, in this relationship with their primary care physicians, in what we call a patient-centered model of care. And it's really unique because it wraps everything around the patient instead of the patient having to race around and figure it out and put the pieces together for themselves. Their care team at DAP actually does that for them. They assess what they need and then they put together the plan, uh, whether that's getting them connected to a behavioral care care professional or a social service or uh, housing assistance, whatever it is they need to make sure they stay connected to care and can thrive. And one thing that DAP has been doing for several years now is a very special walk. Yes. And that is coming up very soon here in October. Talk to everyone, that's the 23rd and 24th of October. Talk to everyone about what we can see on those days, what's happening. Yep. We're going virtual in these times. Yep. So we're going virtual, but in many ways, the walk's always been virtual because we've always walked for a goal that we couldn't see. We didn't know what the solution was going to be. We just knew we had to come together and respond to a crisis. And this year's no different, right? We're walking for three main reasons. We're walking to end the HIV epidemic as we always do, and of course, remember those we've lost. But we're also walking to expand healthcare access because again, we wanna be part of the solution for the social and racial inequalities that COVID has shined a spotlight on. And then finally, we're walking to continue to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, our triage clinic is, remains open for testing. Um, it will be a space that continues to see patients. We get almost 400 calls a day with the community asking questions, they have concerns, they need information. And so whether it's in, you know, putting all of our resources online for the community, uh, getting HIV tests mailed to someone's home if they can't come in, launching virtual health care as we did at the beginning of the pandemic to make sure that people stayed connected to care regardless of geography, regardless of their ability to come in person. All of the many ways that DAP has responded to each of those three sort of core reasons we're walking, that's what the walk's about this year. We're coming together as a community, we're going to spread hope, we're going to give hope to the patients and the individuals who call DAP their healthcare home as we do every single year. We're just going to be doing it with our smaller groups of friends instead of a large group. So how can people get involved in the walk this year? Yeah, so it's really easy. You just go to desertaidsproject.org and um, you register to walk, I mean, share it with your friends, share it on social media, uh, stay connected with us on social media, you know, at our Facebook page, DAP Community Action. Uh, we'll get you connected to all of the sort of coaching emails that you need to keep you inspired and help you kind of spread the word to your friends and family as you're fundraising. Yes, and Stephen and I are actually going to do the walk next week and yes. show you there are some really cool stops along the way. You'll see maps when you sign up and you'll get a full thing. We're going to show you those walks, some really cool Instagram worthy yes. spots, right Stephen? We're going to do that and we're going to wear our masks, yes, right? Yes, yes. The official Desert Aids Walk Watts. When you register, you get a mask to wear so that you can spread hope across the valley. So catch us next week with our mask, taking the walk. We're gonna show you really cool places. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. I'm now at Honda of the Desert where we're gonna go find General Manager Gil Rubenberg to introduce you to this week's Essential Employee of the Week. Come on, let's go find him. Gil? Gil? There he is. Gil? Go! Taylor, tell everyone who this week's Essential Employee of the Week is. Oh, she's awesome. This week, all the way from the Olive Crest, meet Joanna. We are here at Olive Crest in Palm Desert, about to surprise Joanna Ramirez. She has no idea we're here. Come on, let's go. Okay, Joanna Ramirez. Yes. Joanna, can you please come forward? You are getting surprised today. You are our Essential Worker of the Week, which is why we are all here. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I was here for an interview for something else. You are getting a thousand dollars from Honda and Toyota of the Desert. Joanna, thank you very much. We heard a little bit of your story this morning. You go above and beyond, and we appreciate everything you do. So go out and spend this money. There you go. Just so, so, so many incredible stories that I heard this morning just from all your colleagues, and we're so fortunate to be able to award this to you. So congratulations. Now, we understand that you go into the homes of families, especially during COVID, which is why we're here today, to tell you that everyone here appreciates all your efforts, and you mean so much to not only your work community, but to the whole Coachella Valley. Wow, thank you so very much. I'm so appreciative. I love you all. Thank you. I can't do anything I do without the support of all my people here. So thank you so very much. And we are so excited for you, Johanna. I know you thought you were coming here to tell stories about your work, but the stories about you, <laughs> we're celebrating you and the amazing work that you've done, especially during these past few months with our families and COVID. Nothing has stopped you to going out into the homes and supporting them through grief, through loss, through resources. So a thousand dollars, you have any plans? Uh, Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, wasn't Joanna just awesome? So awesome. Big shout out to both Joanna and all of Chris. I can't wait to meet next week's essential employee. Me either. All right, Gil. I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. Wait, wait, come back, come back. What about my quote of the week? Oh, uh, how could I forget? What's your quote of the week, Gil? This week's quote is don't forget to smile while you still got all your teeth. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> You ready to start the day, Thalia? You bet. We got a lot to cover. And I have something I want to tell you about in your health today. Hey, it looks as though we have some changes in the weather coming up real soon. Grab your popcorn, we're talking movies. Waking up with NBC Palm Springs today, 5 to 7 a.m. Stand by. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. Since I'm on the road for this show, I thought this would be very fitting. Have you ever been on a road trip and you wonder how a town came to be or where that plaque came from or something? Well, that information and much more is now available at your fingertips with a new app. The app is backed by Oscar winner Kevin Costner and it is helping road warriors learn as they explore our vast country. NBC's Dan Shenneman is telling you all about it. What river is this? Ah, that's the Mississippi. The mighty Mississippi. <laughs> the old Miss. You know that, kids? That's the St. Louis Arch. Getting way to the west. It's over 600 feet tall. What's that? It's a new app I downloaded. So you don't have to uh, prompt the app. It's going to, to play these stories for you. More than half of travelers surveyed say that that's one of the most important reasons why they travel is to learn about the place and the culture and the history. <laughs> I, I was that guy that was always uh, in the car wanting to stop and see the bronze markers along the way when it said historic, historical site. We have an opportunity to preserve kind of, you know, our history and, and do it while people are driving. But for me, uh, I think that's really our opportunity to 
preserve things that are uh, that, that have been uh, forgotten. The Cold Spring Tavern is hidden in a secluded canyon just off San Marcos Pass. Families to enjoy live music and cool beverages. Here, here is available in the App Store right now, and it has like over 10,000 places, coast to coast, that you can check out. So I'm giving you the next two minutes to go look at those things. I'll see you after the break. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. As you've been seeing the whole show, I've been on the road to celebrate that fall is finally here. With fall comes all those pumpkin things, pumpkin pies, pumpkin candles, and uh-huh, pumpkin spice lattes. Now I'm showing you how you can still have your favorite fall drinks, but while watching your waistline. You can still get your fall favorite fix without all the sweeteners and calories by simply switching it up. First up, the pumpkin spice latte. You can replace this by making your own pumpkin spice smoothie by using a little bit of pumpkin puree and pumpkin spice. Add that with your protein powder and some almond milk and you've got a delicious replacement. Next up, the chai tea latte. Instead of having that, which can run you almost 300 calories, you can do this for under 30 calories by simply adding a dash of cinnamon with hot water, a black tea bag, and some almond milk. And you can't have fall without apple cider, but it can be loaded with sugar. Instead, do half apple cider and half water, or make your own apple cider tea with a simple apple cider tea bag, and then slice your own apple slices, put it in, and steep. Finally, you can still have hot chocolate on those cool nights. Get this replacement for only 50 calories. You can use some cocoa powder, which is unsweetened chocolate, dump that into a little cup, and then add in a little bit of almond milk, skim milk, or even just water. Cutting down on sugar and calories without cutting out your favorites. Thank you for that health and wellness coach, Stephanie Manzar. I love me a good healthy drink. And also, thank you, Brandy, for driving us around. Make sure you tune in and watch her. Follow her on social as well. Yes. I hope you enjoyed this spooky season special. I'll see you next week on the Weekly Rundown.